Hello, Cleveland. You know, back in 2006, my wife, Anita, and I, we had this extraordinary experience, this great pleasure of touring a naval base in San Diego. Our guide that day just happened to be this big old tall drink of water Navy SEAL who was recovering from combat related injuries. Now, he was a Texas boy. He was, he was pretty plain spoken and respectful. And his love for America came through loud and clear. As we departed that day, I just told him, kind of in passing, if you're ever in Austin, come by and see us. <laughs> now, you know, some people might say that uh, that meeting was just blind chance or a twist of fate. I'll tell you, it was by the grace of God. And he and I kept in touch over the course of the months through a tour that he had in Iraq and in his return to Texas. And darned if he didn't just show up on our doorstep at the governor's mansion, unannounced, with nowhere else to go. We welcomed him into our home. We helped him get the care that he needed. And today, he's like a second son. Now, many of you know the battles he fought in Afghanistan, but too few of you know the battles that he and thousands of veterans just like him face when they come home. Tonight, our commitment is this. Making America great again starts by taking care of our veterans. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome an American hero, the lone survivor. Marcus Luttrell. Cleveland. Yeah. Y'all know I love you. I love coming down here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you again for having me back. For those of you I've stood before in the past, it's a pleasure to do so again. For those of you I haven't stood in front of, thank you for the privilege to do that. Really, I mean it from the bottom of my heart. I was fortunate enough in, in life to be born from a patriotic family. It taught me to love this country and the people who make her up unconditionally to die for any woman and to fight beside any man without hesitation or hopes of individual achievement. That's the way I was raised and that's the way I still walk my life. For generations, the men and women in my family have served this country proudly, both at home and abroad. My father served in Vietnam and although he was shamed out of his uniform, it only solidified his resolve to raise his boys, me and my twin brother to be patriotic and love this country and its people more than we loved ourselves. Yeah. 
The past 10 years of my SEAL, uh, Navy SEAL career, the first, first 10 was in combat. The next part of it, I was traveling around the country, state to state, city to city, town to town, armed only with the memories of your bravest fighters and the story of how hard they fought to protect our way of life. And because I was willing to completely open up my life and speak about the worst week of it, I was blessed with meeting and seeing all the greatest people America had to offer. And I think it's important, I think it's important to say that we got to make sure that the, uh, the hell the veterans return from is not the hell to come home to, okay? That's what was promised and that's what's deserved, period. It also speaks volume about my generation and I love my generation, Generation X, the X-Men. It was an honor to fight along alongside all of you. That even when the system doesn't take care of our boys, the citizens step up, start foundations and programs to help the wounded and the families of the fallen. So from the bottom of my heart, and literally, please know that I end every day on my knees thanking God for, for y'all and what you do and how you covet my generation of veterans coming home. I got a chance to, um, for those of you who know me, you know I only talk about stuff that, that, I've, that I've experienced, and usually on the worst side of it and the best side of it. Well, I had a, I had a chance to actually uh, spend time with Mr. Trump, and I know he understands what it's going to take and to fix this. And to, the only way we're going to keep America safe is to have an elite military, all right? made up of the warriors and prepared by the toughest training that we have to offer, supported by the best equipment and backed up by the nation, well, that puts those people in harm's way. Every one of us has to step up in some way. We need our leaders to lead by example that each and, <clears throat> excuse me, they need to lead by example and show the American public that each and every life underneath the flag should be family and treated accordingly. I'm sorry. I'm so used to speaking from the heart when I have to read this, it goes wrong. So I'm just going to go. You ready? Not only do the leaders have to step up and support us, but the family, those of us in here, we're all family. We step up and we back them up too. Not only that, we hold them accountable for every position and office that they hold. Either way, look, either way, the only way we survive this is together, not apart. In order for any life to matter, we all have to matter. You understand? To my generation, that was for y'all. To the next generation, this is for you. Your war is here. You don't have to go searching for it. Your people are afraid. I stand among you walking. I was allowed to walk with giants, all right? And now we're looking for the next generation of giants. Who among you will love something more than you love yourself, all right? Who among you are going to step up and take the fight to the enemy? Because it's here. I challenge all of you to fight for this country and for each and every one of us. Look, the world outside of our borders is a dark place, a scary place. America is the light, and her people are the goodness that grows from that. She'll always be worth fighting for, and it was my greatest honor to fight for her every day of my adult life, all right? And I, I just wanted to come up here and thank each and every one of you from the bottom of my heart for allowing me to serve you for 20 years. And I swear to God, I'm going to spend the next 20 paying you back. So thank you again. God bless.